Yeah, let's play it in. Welcome back to part two of our engine teardown series. This is Dyster and Razmat's performance. So we're going to continue on where we left off and we hope you come along for the ride. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with all your friends and buddies. And this is about where we left off on our last video. So we installed the pulley puller. Um, we had to order this, so that's part of the reason why we stopped here last video. Um, so let's just get to removing this. I got my wrench. This is on. These are us hand put in. This is in place. And we'll just pull this out for you. So let's see how easy this thing comes. Ooh. We're turning the crank now. A lot of times you'll have someone just holding the flywheel back, but because we still have the transmission on, that's a lot harder. So, I think we got it. She's coming. There we go. And for this engine, all the timing is actually done on this. That's all your timing teeth. So, we'll pull these off. And this is your crank sensor right here. There's a connector for it. This is to keep all the junk out of it. This plate right here. And those sensors are very notorious for going bad. So we will be chucking that sensor. And the other thing that goes bad a lot on these cars is this harness, as they just rub right here. As they go around, as you can see, this harness has been rubbing. And we even have a damaged wire right there. Like, these harnesses go bad. And you can buy Dorman replacement engine harnesses for about a hundred bucks if you have one of these engines. If you're tearing into it this far, I recommend one. And, yeah. I'm gonna unplug these connectors. And then this cover is just basically clipped on. There's no bolt in it. This comes off just like that. And then this little harness you just, I recommend just tossing. Keep the cover. Now let's pull the sensor off. Right here, these two bolts. Got the top one, and you got the bottom one. And then, sensor should just come right off. So that's about old sensor. We're ditching that. Keep the bolts. And then we remove this piece, which is unique to the supercharged engine. Well, these bolts right here are 10 mils. And we'll just pull them off really quick. And we hit a coolant passage. That's that mount. Yeah, let's play it in. The fun of removing the bolts from the front of an engine. So many of them can go into coolant passages. So let's remove this timing cover slash water pump base. So we'll just be all half inch bolts around it. We're gonna leave the cam sensor in place for it. So you got bolt up here, bolt here, bolt here, bolt here. And we'll just go zipping them out. Oh, another coolant passage one. And we'll just get the bottom ones out. And take a quick look for any others. Which I see one right down here. 
So I'll have to get a wrench and remove that one. We'll see if it. So we got one additional bolt under here that's hiding. It is a 3 8 bolt. And I'm good going. So get it removed. And this is your oil pan bolt from underneath. And just slowly undo that. And I think that's everything holding her in. Let's see if she'll come. And I think they heavily silicone this in on us. Unless they have a hidden bolt. Oh, two more. On the bottom. Right there. And one up in here. Broken both loose. And I cover these bolts in silicone so they're not wanting to just come out. Bad boy comes loose. Ready? Mm -hmm. Part of this old gasket. Here's our oil pump on the back of this. So this is what drives your oil pump. And this is basically where your oil filter attaches. So, so doing an oil pump on these engines is not too bad. Got a small tensioner bolt, which I'm going to guess is a 7 mil. But we will be getting rid of the tensioner outright and going to a double timing chain. So, there is that. We will be getting rid of this gear right here. This is for the balance. We will be keeping the balance shaft in there, but it won't be moving anymore. The double timing chain requires that to be removed. The, fit the double timing chain in. And since we want that more power, it throws the balance shaft weight off anyway. So we're just going to delete it. Right here is your camshaft sensor piece that the sensor detects. We will need to save that. There's that bolt loose. And once we remove this timing chain, we can no longer turn over the engine or else we just kidding. Let's pull off the tensioner. There, there's the tensioner, and we'll pull the timing chain forward. Pull this off. This will be the old timing chain. We'll pull the sensor out of it, like so. It's so literally just a magnet. That over there, and there's our old timing chain. We're going to remove this gearing. And this is just the balance shaft. 
Well, we gotta remove this gear and this gear. Bring it that way. There we go. We'll pull this gear off. And I believe we can just leave the bearing retainer in there. And that can just sit there. And that's the front of the engine disassembled. We're gonna start removing the MAF sensor and the throttle body. So we're just gonna first remove this hose off the side, pop it off, and we had boot brake on us, so we'll have to fix that later. And we'll remove the hose clamp up here, and we'll just take this all off as one, like so. There's the mass airflow sensor. And then we'll remove the throttle body, which is four bolts, all 10 mil, and the bottom ones are going to be actually studs. So, all right, right off, throttle body, and you can see all the caking from the EGR, what mess it makes, so we'll probably get all that carbon cleaned out. Pull the studs out, if they'll come. Just so we can clean the surface up a lot better. It's one, and two. And then we'll go ahead and pull EVAP off. This one's broken, so this is the EVAP solenoid. There's just one bolt on the side, 10 mil. There it is. There's the bolt. And then we'll remove the EGR, which is 313s. One, two, three. Just like that. And we will also be removing the EGR valve here. And it has two half inch bolts at the top. Let's replace the valve. These valves get clogged up with carbon really easily. So we'll just break that valve off and chuck that and keep this base. And we'll put a new EGR valve on and then we can just have this assembly ready to go for the next part when we rebuild this engine. We'll probably tear it apart and paint it. Next up we're going to be removing our bypass solenoid and our pressure sensors here and then the fuel rail. So we'll remove these two bolts right here. And those are our pressure sensors. The one sensor checks the intake pressure and the other one is atmosphere pressure for the boosted application. And we'll take off the bypass solenoid.
which has a bolt deep in here. Not the easiest bolt to get to, but actually I'm gonna take this outside piece off first so we can get at it. And we'll reattach this piece. And then this just block this hose. Basically, pull it off. This uses vacuum pressure to make it so you don't overboost after you shut the valve. And then we'll pull this off, which is our vacuum line. And then we'll go for this fuel rail, which is four bolts from the top. that are studded. I'll grab that bowl in here in a moment. Pull the injectors. Grab the nut we failed to grab earlier. And one of the injectors decided not to come with the fuel rail. We'll pull that. And just pop it right back into the fuel rail after pulling off the clip. Sliding it back in. We'll put new O-rings and stuff on these when we rebuild the engine. That's a fuel rail. All right, the next thing we're going to be removing is this supercharger, which is all these hex bolts from the top. So I'll start with this one on top. These ones are on tight. At least that top one. All right. Yeah, that bolt loose. And we do have a mixture of different length bolts. All the way around. So these are supercharger bolts right here. Three different, four different lengths. You got the short ones, you got three longer ones that are different lengths. 
And then the supercharger should just pop right off. And there's your blower pack right there. I'm going to pull the remainder of this gasket off. This is your PCV valve, which we'll just be leaving in the blower. And there's the, the water the air intercooler. All right, let's remove this water the air intercooler. It's basically held on with the same bolts as the supercharger. Right there. Ooh, shiny. Yeah. Looks like it has a little bit of carbon buildup, but that should be fine. We'll reuse that one where we build the engine. And then we got the intake, lower intake, right here. We pull this gasket off so we can actually see all the bolts. Because there are a few bolts I like to hide on this. And it looks like we did get a little bit of water in here, but that should be okay. That's on the outside, thankfully. And then we're going to remove the studs that hold on the fuel pump, the fuel rail. And these just come out pretty simply. The nice thing is, when we put this thing back together, we'll have all this footage to know where everything came from. Am I wrong, Ty? No. That's the last stud. And we'll remove this thermostat. is 10 mil. <laughs> and we'll just trash this and put a new one in when it comes time. And milk to the side and put a 3/8 socket on and we'll just start removing these bolts one by one And then pull this up, try and get the water out of the engine. Alright. This is the intake. Here's your coolant temperature sensor. So I'll leave this. We'll pull this apart when we rebuild it a little bit. But now we'll just set it to the side. Here's the intake gaskets. These are the upgraded metal ones. If you have the plastic ones, I highly recommend replacing them because they do leak if you have the old plastic ones. Mount before we remove the valve covers because we just forgot to remove it. We got a one, two, three, and that mount comes right on. And then we'll switch back to these head covers, valve covers. 
and we just got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on each side. We're going to quickly remove our oil fill cap. And go for it. It looks like we've already been upgraded a little bit up here. I can tell you these are not the stock rockers. These are upgraded ones. So we do actually have to be careful when we pick out a cam. And these are upgraded valve springs. Good to know. I'll remove the other valve cover. And long term, we'll actually probably throw this valve cover over here and put the oil fill on this side in the end because of the application change. Just to make filling up oil easier. When I removed the rockers, we could not figure out uh, what ratio they are. So I'm hoping they're 1.65. The stock ones are 1.6. So. We'll pop them off. And then we'll go this side. start popping them off as a pair. We'll grab push rods. These are upgraded push rods. From ZR CZ Performance. These lifter guides and pull the lifters out. All right, we're gonna remove the head bolts and remove the heads. We got the torque sequence on my phone right here, so we can remove it. So it's gonna be this bolt, followed by this one, and the loosening. That's loose. One's loose. Followed by this one. Well, we gotta remove this really quick. All right, let's continue with that. We had to stop for a moment to pull some of the remaining exhaust studs out and the train it went by. So we'll continue with this bolt.
And then this bolt over here. And this bolt. Followed by this bolt. Back to this one. And finally this one. And then we'll move back to the other side. Go to this one. To this one. To this one. Back over to this one. I'll try this one. And this one. Followed by this one. And this one. And then we'll just zip the rest of them out with the impact. Now that they're all loose. Alright, we'll remove all the rest of the bolts by the impact since they're all loose now. All these bolts are torqued to yield, so they are trash once you pull them out. You don't want to break off a head butt bolt. And then we can pop heads off. And grab a crowbar. And see if we can't get these heads loose. There's one side. There's the other, right there. All right, we'll pull them off. There's the bottom of the valves. Now let's go put these to the side. And we'll pull this side off. Look at that, more coolant. Move the lifters from the block. So, these are roller rockers. They do not appear to be stock, but I can't quite tell which ones these are. So we may re reuse them, we may not. We'll pull them out carefully. Like 
Ça. And there's our lifters. You don't want to be in too bad a shape. So we have the cam retainer plate right here. Two bolts. They are Torx 30. And we're just going to insert the impact. Pull them. Pull the retainer plate off. And then we can pull the cam. Oh, look at that little V6 cam. Yeah, we got a little cam here. It's not very big. Doesn't look to be in too bad a shape. It's all shiny. You should see it on the camera. Shiny? Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to guess stock cam. So we might end up going back in with the stock lifters and an upgraded cam from most likely either Intense Racing or ZZ Performance. We haven't quite decided on what cam to go with, but it does look like our cam bearings are not in the best of shape. So that kind of sucks, but I guess that's why. We have a lot of wear at the very bottom of the bearing, right there. So we'll have to get those pulled out and replaced.